Where is this? Florida. It's you guys? Yeah. No, well, I don't know. What's up, everybody? Antoine here with Clement. No, it's a deal. What's up, everybody? How's it going? What's up, everybody? How's it going? Antoine here, and I'm with Clement, my co founder for Algo Expert. We've got a very exciting video for you today. I'm here with my co founder on Algo Expert, Antoine, uh, and we are going to be talking about a very cool feature that we've got in Algo Expert, the remote code execution engine. We'll get into what that is in a second if you don't already know, and we're going to be talking about how we built it. But before we do, Antoine, what's the obligatory Algo Expert plug? So go to algoexpert.io slash Clem and you can use Clem as a promo code on the platform. For <laughs> discount. That was the worst pitch ever. Okay. Use the promo code Clem, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. Thanks, that, that was way better. That was like, yeah. you know that like people are gonna be more inclined to go. Anyway, so on Algo Expert, users can write code and run it against pre-made test cases. They can also run it against their own test cases. How does that work? Okay, well, so the user writes code in the UI, right? And when they press run code, the UI takes that and sends it over to the server as, as an HTTP request. And the server sees that, and I'm gonna simplify it for now, but essentially calls out to Python or Node.js or the Java compiler and runs that code captures the output and then sends it back to uh, to the UI for the display. UI. That's basically what we call the remote code execution yeah, engine. So exactly. in Algo Expert, we call it the RCE. Now, this is like a critical part of Algo Expert. It's a critical right. part of the platform. It sounds simple enough. Like the way you describe it is basically an HTTP request that has an input and then it spits something back out. Right. Is it that simple though? Well, so it started out really, really simple, which, uh, we basically did that right. uh, for at least the proof of concept okay. uh, work that we did a while ago, uh, almost three years ago now, I guess. Almost, yeah. yeah. Uh, but since then, we've had to handle a lot of edge cases and it's called for a lot of improvements over time. When you only consider the happy path, right, of someone runs code and the code compiles and the code runs and the code passes the test cases, uh, it's, it's really easy to do, right? right? But what's tricky is getting the more, uh, the edge cases, right? right. So which, which are not even that edge. No, they happen all the time. When so you have we, a we lot have, of users, right? We have tens of thousands of user run code on our website every single month, right? Or every week now. Well, what's the, I think on, on a daily basis these days, we have what, like 8,000 run codes? Yeah. Yeah. Users code run code 8,000 times every single day. And uh, we have a lot of different kinds of question, questions on the website, so we hit those edge cases very, very often. Right. Those edge cases are something, things like uh, running out of memory or having an infinite loop, right? So the code times out, you need to make sure that you clean up the processes properly on the back end, right. or you need to make sure that the process doesn't use as much memory as the machine has, because then otherwise we can't serve traffic, right? right. So we have to be able to isolate you, uh, one user's code from another user's code. So that's the key thing I think that people need to wrap their head around if they're trying to understand how this RC works is that what you just said, isolation. You can't have one user's run code process or, or like thing affect another user. Yeah, exactly. And so what is, like how do we do that basically? So actually since the get-go, the main, the core technology that we've used to do that uh, is called Docker. It's uh, an open source technology. It's very, very popular uh, among infrastructure engineers. Uh, very, very easy to use, even for someone who doesn't know much about a lot of operating system level things or kernel level things. Right. And it gives you most of the tools that you need to be able to isolate a process from another in terms of files, in terms of CPU, and memory. And this is, this is using a Docker container, right? Yes, you, exactly. you, you basically containerize someone's run code yeah. event or environment in, in a single environment, in an yes. isolated environment, and that allows us to do that. Now, let's assume that someone knows how to use Docker now, and they, you know, again, it's almost like once you, once you get past that hump, sounds simple enough, but again, like what are the challenges that come with this? So, so the second iteration of, of the remote code execution just spun up a new container, right. so created a new container for every single run code. So, so again, just to, to clarify, you, you, you make an HTTP request, yeah. you spin up a new Docker container yes. with exactly the code right. where yeah. you execute it in, let's say, Node or Python or Java, 
And that's that's what you're describing. Yeah, and yeah. when the code exit, the container dies and gets cleaned up and okay. everything happens. And it's great, except that the latency for users wasn't where we wanted it to be, really. Right. Because creating a new container takes a lot of time. And, and as a quick side note here, I want to point out something. Uh, you, all you Java users on Algo Expert oh, are going to yeah. appreciate this. So. One of the other challenges that you sort of hinted at is that we have to support multiple languages. Right now right. we have six languages. We have a seventh one coming soon. Comment down below if you know which one it is. Some languages like JavaScript were pretty fast, but Java was actually like a very slow language at first. It was very painful to optimize Java, uh, but we have it sort of down now. Where, now we have it down. Yeah. But it, it used to be, I remember the first time we got Java working, or you got Java working, you came to me and you were like, Clement, Java runs, like it runs in the containers and everything. And I was like, how, how long does it take to, to run a Java, you know, like to run the get and fib question in Java? And you're like, 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, so obviously, like, I had gotten it working, just the functionality, but we were and we are still on really lean infrastructure. We're, we're not spending that much money. Uh, so Which is we, something that we've done intentionally. We right. want to keep our costs down. Yeah, and so it means we can't, we can't just uh, use that as much CPU as we want to to make Java right. run really quickly. Like on your laptops, right, you have like eight CPUs and we don't want to allocate eight CPUs just to run you know, every, sing, every single every time we run code. So. So then how do we how do we optimize that? Because now yeah. Java actually runs like what's the 90th percentile of Java? I think we're around 1.5 seconds for, for Java. Java. Yeah. And whereas like other languages are like JavaScript is like less than half a second, which is great. JavaScript is like our, our baby. It's the yeah. one that we're I mean, in large part it's because like, the language is it was is, super it was super easy to containerize, super easy to run, everything's been really great with So if, if if you're working in JavaScript on Algo Expert, you're gonna have really fast run codes. Yeah. Uh, the fastest basically on our platform. The fastest so. on the platform. Uh, but so Java, how did we how did we optimize? Like, were there any optimizations that we did? Yeah. So there are a lot of language specific optimizations that right. we had to do. Um, so for Java, uh, for those of you who know Java, it's going to sound familiar. You you if you want to run the Java compiler, you have to spin up or create a, a virtual machine inside right. your container, which is very very heavy duty, and uh, so that takes a really long time and then to run the Java code you have to run that same virtual machine again And so I did a lot of optimizations around that to make right. sure that we only created as many as we needed or as few as possible And so right now we only create I think one for every run code hmm. So that was one of the optimizations we did for Java and then but then for other languages it mostly had to do with the testing frameworks. So Python, I remember, was one of them where we started out by using what, PyTest? Yeah, so we, because I am a fan of things that already exist, I don't want to rewrite things that if, not, if we don't, there, have, if we to, don't yeah. have to. So we started using PyTest and it took three, four seconds to run code just because PyTest is a pretty heavy duty framework. Uh, and so uh, pretty quickly I realized that we I, we couldn't really do that because user experience yeah. is really important on Algo Expert. We want the platform to feel really responsive. Yeah, and to, to be clear again, it's having code run in three or four seconds is not necessarily the end of the world, yeah. but when we, we wanted to build the best platform possible, so we wanted everything, we wanted the core product, which is the coding workspace, to be as fast as possible. Yeah. So our, our ideal was always under two seconds. Yeah. For exactly. Run. Yep. Um, but so we switched the testing framework for Python. Yeah, it's the standard unit testing library for Python that we're using. Okay, and that one's faster. And that one's much faster, yes. So another thing that might be interesting to some of you is that if you go on Algo Expert and you run code, you have two different types of output. You have what we call the raw output. This is what you give us, yeah. right? The, the, what the back end gives us. You run your code and you see like, oh, you have an error or all your tests are passing. But then we also have the default output, which we call the custom output, where it just says, you know, test case one, two, three, four, five, right? They're all passing or yeah. they're, some of them are failing. How do we do that? Well, so at the very beginning, it was very hard for us, or I guess for me to conceptualize a world in which all the languages can kind of coexist and have a similar feel, at least from an API point of view. Because that is custom output. That's yeah, something that yeah. we don't get for free, like the raw output. Yeah, so you have to somehow unify all the languages. And since we were just starting out on Algo Expert, we, I, we didn't really have a good solution for that. So right. what we did was actually take the raw output and parse it on the front end. on the front end, and just uh, and figure out which test cases passed and failed, and reorder them in the proper way. If some of you who've, who've ever wondered, like, will I ever be writing algorithms in production code? Well, we actually had to write sort of string matching algorithms where we had 
one string matching algorithm for each of the languages, right, one for JavaScript, one for Python, because all of the raw outputs from these various languages looked different because they were yeah. using their own testing frameworks. And so I think I wrote like half of them and you wrote the other yeah, half yeah. and we were just, you know, parsing the outputs and, or, you know, the, the string outputs to figure out which test cases passed and failed. And we ran into all sorts of, of little, you know, issues with that. But recently we decided to do this, what we deem to be the correct way and have the back end do the right. parsing. But so the way that this had, like the, the right way of this to be done isn't just for the back end to do the parsing of the raw output because it's, it's pretty brittle. Uh, right. And you can easily like control, break it. You can easily break it if the user outputs a certain string. It can just trick kind of the back end or yeah. whatever is parsing it into thinking that a test pass really failed. But so the right way of doing it, which is the way that it took a while, but that we have it now, is we instrumented the testing frameworks in every single language to make sure that uh, the back end could very reliably and a, a parse essentially what the the true output of your test cases were and relay that to the front end in like a very digestible format. And so now this basically makes the front end do a lot less work, which is, it's better. It's better for the front end not to have to parse the output, but we just get sort of a list of results or something like that that tells us, hey, these are the, you know, you have, you have 15 test cases, the first five failed and the last 10 passed. As a matter of fact, we recently, like a couple days ago, deployed a new version of the, of the user interface on Algo Expert, which now relies on this back end, yeah. you know, effort rather than the front end parsing. Yep. But so that's it. That is the Algo Expert remote code execution engine in you know, just a little over 10 minutes. Hopefully you found it informative. Hopefully you were able to get a sense of how this was built. It's been and continues to be a really interesting feature on Algo Expert that has you know, both back end and front end ramifications and infrastructure ramifications. Let us know what you think about it in the comments below. Let us know if you have any questions. Smash the like button, if not for me, for Antoine. He loves the likes. Thank he you needs guys. The likes. I really do. And we'll see you in the next video.